Hello again and welcome to Carlings Presents, an evening of legends in association with the IFA. It is hard to believe, it really is hard to believe, we've done nine of these. We've been to Linfield, Glen Torn, Cliftonville, Ballymena, Coleraine, etc., etc. Now, after tonight, we've got Newry City next week, and the very last one, but not least, is Crusaders. But tonight, we are with County Tyrone's finest, Dungannon Swifts. Small club, but going places. They're in the top six. Tonight, we have got four legendary figures. We have the manager, we have the assistant manager, and we have two Macarees. We have Rodney, who's just retired as a player, and we've got Joe, a former manager, former social club manager. He's done everything at this club, and they are the best father and son double act in these parts. It'll be lively. You'll enjoy it. See, just before we get to some questions, how pleased are you? Top six. It's quite something. Well, uh, I suppose when, the, when I took the job, which was a temporary, and it was actually Joe who, who brought me down, and uh, I, I think it was a case of it was forced upon me because I think I was the only one in the, in the local area that had the qualification to take on the job towards the end of last season. And I think I got it by chance and, and a bit of luck. And, I said I would do it till the end of the season and unfortunately we won a relegation playoff against DC and stayed up and uh, to be honest I got a good, great buzz from it Jackie and uh, then I was asked would I consider taking the job at, at the start of the season and it was something I hadn't really thought about but uh, when I went to these two men here I don't think I would have took the job without their help because I knew what they had to offer, I know the qualities that they both have. And I just felt, as a team of three, I think uh, we had a lot to offer. And uh, it certainly, it's, it's not down to me, it's, it's down to the three of us and, and how we planned and, and operated. And obviously, <clears throat> down to the players and how they've carried those instructions out. But uh, it's a massive, you know, it's a massive boost for the club because, uh, you know, everyone had written us off at the start of the season and everywhere I looked, you know, nine out of ten pundits were saying Dungannon would finish bottom and, well, that was motivation at the start of the Good season. Sam Wright, Rodney McAree, what ambitions have you left in football? Um, so probably first and, first and foremost is to hopefully continue on with the success we've had this season and, and for a club, I think our next success is to till win a, a, a major cup at some stage, where that be it the CAS, the Irish Cup. I don't know whether we'll get as far as the Gibson Cup, but I think we've the capabilities of winning one of the two big cups. And I think that's an ambition that I'd like to do, is, is help lead the club to one of them cups. It's a question for Joe. Right, what was the most memorable occasion in your long career? It's very difficult for me to say which one's the best. I mean, Selfishly, as a manager, to get the manager of the year and be presented to, with it by Peter Smeagol was, was something special. When you take into consideration on that night, uh, Roy Coyle had won the league and I think the, the cup as well. And he would have been certainly, he would certainly have been favourite to get the manager of the year. But I think the football writers felt that for a club like Dungannon from the country till it finished in fourth place and qualified for Europe was something special, better and more important than Roy Coyle doing, having such a fantastic season with Lentorn. And I remember when I was called up that night, it was, it was, uh, I, 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 I'm not often stuck for words, as most people would know, but I just, I just couldn't find words that night. It was such a shock 
I never really called my name out. And uh, that, shock, that, that would a shock be... for Roy Coyle as well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I knew by Roy's face that he was shocked. <laughs> um, this is regards to the Premier League. Does the management think that there should be a wage cap in the Premiership and would it work? Should there be a cap put on wages in the Premier League? It's a good question. And would it work? Well, personally, from my point of view... You'll have to put a cap on it with, the, with the new it, budget. I think it is a... <laughs> there's, more, there's a lid on it, Jack. <laughs> Does what it says in the tin. Uh, eh? I think Can I borrow that chair? Because this is going to be a long answer. No, it'll not be a long answer. I just think, in theory, it's a fantastic idea, and it's an idea that, that uh, everyone would be in favour of. But anybody who's been in football, as long as we've been in football, knows that it won't be policed properly, and uh, it'll be manipulated, and people, you know, people will find ways of, of paying other players' money, and at the end of the day, if Dungannon Swift, Swift can order, offer a player £120 a week, and he can go somewhere else, and their wage structure determines that they can only pay £120 a week if somebody turns around and gives them an extra 40 quid under the table. That's what happens, and that's what will happen. And in theory, it's a great idea, but I don't think it'll, be ever, it'll ever work. Should the players not be more reasonable in their demands, or does human nature take over in this day and age and say, well, hey, if somebody wants to offer me 400 quid a week, I'll take it. Should the players not have a part to play? Um, not easy to ask when you have answer when you have 15 pounds in you. Well, no, I, I, I'll be honest about the question. I don't think money has ever played a part in my football career. Uh, when I left poor down, the same for Lynn Adam, and I'm not afraid to admit it. Earned £23.50 a week. That's what I got. The buzz I got was playing in front of six, seven thousand people and playing for Glenavon. And, and over the years, you know, over their seven years, when I left Glenavon to go for Linfield, I was earning about £120 a week. And that was when, when then I went to Linfield, it wasn't about the money. It, again, for me, it was all about it was all about playing where I thought I would be happy and where I thought that I had an opportunity to do better. So footballers nowadays, this last five, ten years, it is about money, you know, and they've got away from the fact of what it is, and the enjoyment is playing football. And I enjoyed my football. And when I left Linfield, I came here because I thought it was the right thing for me to do. And, you know, whether, I, whether I'm in five or six years' time, if I'm proved ready with that, you know, I can still stand over that decision. I've never been guided by money, and I never will be. Because at the end of the day, money doesn't bring you happiness. You know, friendships and people bring you happiness. And that's... Just interested to know from uh, Darren and Dixie and, and Rodney, um, who'd be the best player you ever played with or against in the Irish League? Joe Shane, Bertie McMinn, and, and Bertie came here from uh, a long career, and uh, I think he was past his best when he came here. But I have to say, training with him, playing with him. We, me and him started off on the wrong foot because I took the penalties here and Bertie came and, and the first penalty we got, Bertie won the take and we were fighting over the ball. So we went from rivals to, to good mates on and off the pitch, Jackie, as I'm sure you would know. Out of my 17-year Irish League career, for 12 of them nearly, I played with Len Ferguson. And for me, uh, I know you he joked him, he's the granddad of the Irish League. For me, he is the daddy of, of the Irish League. He is, without doubt, the best I've played with. And Gary Bonus for me, was somebody who I would love to have played a wee bit more with because he was special. He, um, he had something about him. He, the crowd loved him, everybody loved him, his teammates loved him. He had flair, he, he could beat people in a sixpence, as they say. He could, if he went, he went for a goal, he, he was always very accurate. He, he was such a confident lad, but unfortunately, things happen in life, and um, I would love to have had uh, a little bit longer time to play along with Gary Bonus, and I would certainly rank him up with anybody who I've played with in the Irish League. And I guess.